Bridget Evangeline Sellers, an original short story by Jared I. McGee. I remembered her best as Bess. Bessie like the cow. Of course, I can't remember when she was first burdened with that nickname based on her initials. It certainly wasn't in place the first day of kindergarten in Miss Hammond's class at Penshormoreau Elementary in Grissom, Arkansas. She sat at the green table. I was assigned to pink. An odd memory to have so poignant at the forefront of my mind attached to this person. Her name wasn't Bess. It wasn't Bessie either. Her real name was Bridget Evangeline Sellers, an elegant name for what even the kindest of souls would have admit was an inelegant young lady. From an early age, Bridget was put on the back burner, by almost everyone, really. Oddly enough, the adults blazed the trails that would become well-worn over the course of Bridget's life. She was never first in line. She was rarely called on when she raised her hand. She wasn't celebrated the way the other children were. In every way, she was ushered into the background of our small class's existence. White noise with the volume turned way, way down. Bridget and I were never the best of friends, but we did play at recess. She loved to braid my hair. She would bring sparkly jelly barrettes to put in my hair. We were partnered in class from time to time, too. I made all A's as school came easily to me. She made all C's and was required to attend after-school tutoring. Still... We worked well together. She was far from stupid. She just liked to think about things a little bit longer, to mull her thoughts over, to take the time to thoughtfully process and consider all the input coming her way. Another memory I have of Bridget is during our snack breaks. Actually, they were Coke breaks. Though that's far from okay anymore in schools these days. We all got to leave our classroom, walk down the hall to the vending machine, and purchase milk from a cart or a canned drink from one of the machines. Drinks there at the school were only 50 cents, quite the deal. My family was far from rich, but I allotted my 50 cents a day, five days a week. However, to get an ocean spray crayon grape juice, that was a full dollar. I had to save my quarters to get myself that treat. I was quite a fan of that juice. But time and time again, especially as I grew older and became more aware, I would see that Bridget could not purchase anything. So time and time again, especially as I grew older and became more aware, I would buy us both a milk or a Coke, foregoing my crayon grape ambrosia and instead enjoying Bridget's company and obvious excitement of getting a drink during our little break time. She was, for 15 minutes, out of the background and a full member of the little society that was our class. I moved from Penshormoreau the summer before sixth grade. My family relocated to the state capital, which only lasted two years. Then we relocated to a far too rich for us suburban college town. Thanks to the relative smallness of the fair state and the advent of social media platforms and their way of shrinking the world down more and more, I came across Bridget online roughly eight years after what might have been our joint high school graduation. After accepting a friend request from her, It became obvious she'd not finish high school. She'd gotten pregnant senior year and dropped out. Now she was a combination janitor and lunch lady at our old elementary school. She never left that building, even in all this time. It floored me. Still, she was clearly providing for herself and her daughter. Her pictures were full of smiles and fun little localized adventures. As I began to pity my former classmate, Making the assumption that some of that happiness had to be feigned for her daughter's sake, I saw multiple online albums of photos of Bridget at immigrants' rights rallies, same-sex marriage support demonstrations, picketing lines for more assistance to the homeless and the elderly. I quickly halted my ascent up my high horse. Here was this girl who, according to the doctrine of Penshormrail, and of almost all small hick towns, was a failure, an abject mess and lesson in what a dreg of society is, as she not done the all-important getting out. She dropped out of school. She'd become a single unwed mother at 17 years old. Yet here, on this highly public online town square of sorts, she espoused progressive ideas and flowing, eloquent musings and captions to go along with her pictures. Here was that big-hearted girl that few had ever taken the time to get to know launching into the breach, 
Here was that kind soul that was not white noise coming to the forefront to be heard clarion, crystal, and loud as could be. Believe it or not, I had saved some of those silly barrettes Bridget used to put in my hair. After shooting her a, hey, how's it going message, I dug one of my little memory boxes out, and I went and put my hair up with those shimmery, tangible childhood memories. The glint of the barrettes brought a smile, just as they had back on the playground all those years ago. More amazingly, those simple gifts from another life stood as shining beacons of hope for a wearied soul in a very cynical world. Thank you for listening to Bridget Evangeline Sellers, an original short story by me, Jared I. McGee. The backing tracks for this story were taken from the Free Music Archive and are That Hopeful Future Is All I've Ever Known and We Were Never Meant to Live Here from the album Music from Neptune Flux by Chris Zabriskie. They are being used under Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International Licenses. Please follow the links at prosepodcast.com to check out more music from Mr. Zabriskie and please consider providing him with a donation for his wonderful contribution. Thank you to Mr. Zabriskie for providing this music to the Free Music Archive and indeed to the world. I must also take a moment to thank Abigail Lambert from the bottom of my heart and celebrate her amazing accomplishment. In roughly 10 days, she learned the ins and outs of both narrative and music production, sound editing, and much, much more. That my friends, is to be lauded. Well done, Abby. With that, we end prose for this week. Please let me know if you'd like to hear more episodes featuring my young protege, Abigail Lambert. Her project is over, but that does not mean that her collaboration with the podcast must cease. As always, thank you for listening to prose. I sincerely cannot tell you how much it means to me that you all allow these stories into your lives. Much love to you all, and we'll see you next week.